The bystander effect. We normally see it during anti-bullying campaigns. Student projects. On the news when somebody dies while bystanders look, doing nothing to help. So, what's the big deal about the bystander effect? What is it? Why does it happen? And what does this have to do with our society? The bystander effect is a social issue that arose after the death of New Yorker Kitty Genovese. Kitty Genovese was stabbed to death outside of her apartment building by Winston Mosley on March 13, 1964. But the gruesome part about the attack that gained attention in the media was that there were many witnesses to the attack. An investigation by police after the death showed that approximately a dozen individuals nearby had heard or seen portions of the attack. It was originally reported by the New York Times that there were 38 witnesses. Two of the witnesses, Joseph Fink and Carl Ross, were aware of the actual attacks. Joseph Fink was aware of the first stabbing and did nothing. Carl Ross was aware of the stabbing and the second attack and called for police that ended the tragedy. Genevieve arrived home at about 3.15 a.m. As she walked towards her apartment, Mosley, who had been following her for quite some time, exited his vehicle. He approached Genevieve, armed with a knife. Terrified, she ran across the parking lot towards the front of her building. Mosley proceeded to run after her and stabbed her twice in the back. Many were entirely unaware of the assault or homicide was in progress, and at the end of the attack, Genevieve screamed, Oh my god, he stabbed me, help me! Several neighbors heard her cry, but few of them recognized it as a cry for help. One neighbor, Robert Mosier, shouted at the attacker, Let that girl alone! Now, you'd assume that any sensible person after yelling at let that girl alone would go and help her, but unfortunately, no. Genevieve crawled out of view from witnesses, and nobody came to help. Mosley left, but, however, he came back ten minutes later to finish the job. After Mosley attacked again, our friend Carl Ross here called the police, and they arrived shortly after. But it was too late. An ambulance came at 4.15 a.m., the last place she would be before she died. Thanks to the New York Times, this would be blown out of proportion when they published an article about the attack highlighting that there were 38 witnesses. This horrified the public, as to why 38 law-abiding citizens didn't call the police during the 35-minute attack. This gained traction in the psychological studies community, where two social psychologists, John M. Darley and Bib Latane, conducted studies on the bystander effect. So what exactly did they find? One of the first steps in anyone's decision to help another is seeing that they need help. The way we most commonly do this is by observing the reactions of others in our environment. We normally don't want to go about being a hero if we don't have to, unless we had superpowers, because that would be really cool. So instead, we assess the situation to see how others react. For Darle and Latani's study, they had two sets of participants complete a questionnaire, and after a few minutes, smoke would start to pour into the room underneath the door. One set included an individual participant in the room alone, and the other had three participants two in which were hired to keep calm no matter what. The results showed that the participant was alone, 75% left the room to go look for help. But when there were two other people in the room, 10% left to go get help. Due to the test subject being alone, they were more like to, likely to act heroic due to the lack of people reacting calm. While when the test subject was with two other participants that were acting calm, they assumed because everybody else was okay with it, they should be too. This is what's called pluralistic ignorance, which is a fancy word, but breaking it down, it basically means that multiple people think that other people are okay, so they should be okay, even though that nobody actually thinks that they're okay. We cope in this in all sorts of different trivial situations, like asking the teacher for help during class, or not doing it as to not look stupid, vice versa, or when a huge group of people clog up the hallway and nobody asks them to move. That's irritating. The next thing that Darley and Latone found is diffusion of responsibility. This is fancy psychological language for the more people that there are, the less responsible that you feel. Which also ties into a neat little bow with pluralistic ignorance. It basically goes like this. If you're the only person present, 100% of the responsibility is yours. If you're one of two people present, 50% of the responsibility is yours. One of three, 33%. One of four, twenty-five percent. I think you get the gist. This is you diffusing the responsibility amongst your peers. In these situations, people assume that someone else will help or someone better qualified will help. Take into consideration this video. Liverpool Street Station in London, a busy thoroughfare for commuters. Uh, uh, Unknown to these uh, passers-by, Peter uh, is an actor. 
As part of an experiment on bystander apathy, he's pretending to be ill. Help. Help. How long before he gets help? Helping would be inconvenient or even risky. He lies there for more than 20 minutes and no one raises an eyebrow. 20 minutes that guy sat there acting in pain and no one helped. This would be a serious problem if that dude wasn't an actor. Diffusion of responsibility and pluralistic ignorance are major contributions to the bystander effect. However, more factors can and often will come into play such as social class, environment, and location. If you're a wealthy looking man in a safe environment with wealthy people, you're much more likely to get help, like in the second part of this video. This time, Peter's dressed as a respectable gentleman. Now that his dress is in keeping with those around him, how long before he's rescued? Hello, sir. How are you today? I'm all right. Six lunch. seconds. <laughs> she even calls him <laughs> sir, and suddenly, no, everyone's fine. a good Samaritan. Do you suffer from epilepsy? No. Why you're lying on the floor in the rain? Because he's part of the right group. Everyone wants to help. Seriously, rich people? You can't help a poor dude in pain, but a depressed rich guy need to immediately cheer up, otherwise you're a horrible human being. Moving on, however, the bystander effect is a huge problem for society for several reasons. Judy of Genovese wasn't the only case of the bystander effect that ended up with death. In October 2011, a two-year-old girl, Wing Yu, or also known as Yu Yu, was hit by a white van in China. She was then run over by a truck after being ignored by 18 bystanders, some in which looked at her and walked around her. She was left for seven minutes before a recycler picked up you and called for help. She died eight days later in a hospital. In April 2016, Amy Anita Joyer Francis, a 16-year-old, died after getting into a fight with a girl over a boy. A bunch of bullies jumped her and slammed her head on a bathroom sink. There were even bystanders that recorded the event. She was later found in critical condition and was rushed by a police helicopter to the hospital where she died. Finally, in April 2010, Hugo Alfredo Tail Yax was stabbed to death in New York City after aiding a woman who was being attacked by a thief. Yax was on the sidewalk for more than an hour before firefighters arrived. Almost 25 people walked by as he lay dying on the sidewalk. Several stared at Yax. One even took pictures of him. However, none of them helped or called emergency services. The fact that so many people can die, not by the hands of a criminal, but by their own peers is horrifying. We spend so much of our time with people, yet we can actively be killed by it. By failing to help each other in need, we ruin ourselves as human beings. Bystander thought breeds apathy, which can make us as humans disconnected from each other. We constantly rely on each other for attention, happiness, and safety. but. Bystander thought can leave us more alone than ever before. We'll slowly shell away from each other, the very thing that makes us an effective species, and remove ourselves from society altogether. Which in itself is ironic, considering the bystander effect is us looking at society not caring, so thinking we should not care. It's an endless cycle before we just end up not caring in general. Like Albert Einstein said, the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil but by those who watch them without doing anything. However, all's not lost. There are ways we can break this cycle, and many others have already started, in which we ignore this driving force in our nature to go out of our way to help one another. From laws put in place by several governments around the world, such as China, which put in place Good Samaritan laws after the death of Wang Yu, Quebec put into place a Charter of Human Rights and Freedoms, and the US even put in its own Good Samaritan laws. We can also stop this by general compassion, stop the problem before it even begins. Just by being aware of the bystander effect, we've already completed the first step in solving it. Another way to solve the bystander effect isn't by just calling for general help, but call out to a specific person. Because once you single somebody out, instead of being in a room with dozens of people looking on to you, it's just two people, you make it personal. With it, more people will follow. So next time you see a person that seems in dire need, 
Just remember, it's better to save somebody and possibly look like an idiot than to ignore them and they die because you did nothing.